Well, here we are at the end of a very long and trying year. You know the struggles you've had to negotiate, but you're here now, gathered with people who love you and love God. In other words, you are safe and sound and in good company. I know you don't need me to tell you that we're only a few short weeks away from Christmas. Christmas is full of fun and games, sweets and treats, dance, song, and all kinds of festivity. Part of me wants to say, be careful of all of this. Of course, celebration is good, but not if it makes us forget the reason for our celebration. You, however, probably don't need me to say that. You are a community who are familiar with the name and the story of Jesus. You know what it is to draw close to him in prayer, to serve him in your neighbour, to listen to him speaking to you in the scriptures as we've just enjoyed, or in nature, or even in the silence of our hearts. Therefore, rather than warning you about the potential distractions of Christmas, I might take a different path. I'd like to bring to mind some of the characters we see who are not characters in the Bible, but nonetheless, they do help to peel back some of the mystery of Christmas for us. I think, of course, of Santa, Rudolph, Ebenezer Scrooge, the Grinch, and other such characters we might have in our minds during this season. What do they have to tell us about Christmas? Well, here's a couple of things we've heard about them. Firstly, Santa. He comes to bring gifts. But there's a catch, isn't there? How has Santa planned who he will give his gifts to? Yes, he's made a list and he's checked it twice. He's finding out who are naughty and nice. Next, there's Rudolph. He was the odd one out amongst his reindeer friends. Unlike the others, Rudolph had a unique feature. He had a red nose which glowed. This made him the subject of much mocking, which surely made him feel alone. Next we have the Scrooge, who might belong to an older generation than you children. But in short, the Scrooge is a man who due to the hardship of his life had lost hope in joy itself. Christmas for the Scrooge is boring at best. It's not a time to be happy, and for that matter there is no such time. Life is dull, and we're best off alone. And finally, a character I think you'd be more familiar with, the Grinch, who's probably a distant cousin of the Scrooge, uh, judging from the way they think and act. The Grinch tried to steal Christmas, to put an end to the songs and food and merriness altogether. Now listen to this. Each of these characters gives us an interesting glimpse into what Christmas is meant to do for each of us. Christmas is for those who are struggling, who are picked on, who are lonely, who are different. In the first reading we heard, the deaf will be able to hear, and the blind who have been living in darkness will open their eyes and see. Poor and humble people will once again find the happiness which Jesus the Lord gives. In our weakness, in our differences, we are beautiful, precious, and we are needed by those around us in ways we will never understand. While Christmas is for everyone, and it is, it is a time when God seeks to put an end to evil in the world picking on the weak, being mean, telling lies, and ganging up on each other, and getting away with it. All of this, God seeks to shine a light on. And the light is a person, the baby Jesus. When he is born, he shines his light on us to show us who we really are, to wake us up, and to bring us together and to himself. And when that happens, we hear, there won't be any more reason for fear or shame or sadness. We will simply understand the beautiful truth that we are family and we have a new baby brother in our midst.
The story of Jesus, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, the angels, even Santa, his reindeer, and the grumps tagging behind. That is your story. So live it. Singing that song which the angels made known to us. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to all people of goodwill.